Now I, Mormon, am about to deliver up the record which I have been making into the hands of my son, Moroni. But behold, I wish to speak somewhat concerning the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ to the people of Nephi. Now it came to pass in the eighty and sixth year, the Nephites did still remain in wickedness, yea, in great wickedness while the Lamanites did observe strictly to keep the commandments of God according to the law of Moses. And it came to pass in this year, there was one Samuel, a Lamanite, who came into the land of Zarahemla and began to preach unto the people. And it came to pass that they did cast him out, and he was about to return to his own land but behold, the voice of the Lord came unto him, that he should return again and prophesy unto the people whatsoever thing should come into his heart. O oh, ye wicked and ye perverse generation, ye hardened and ye stiff-necked people, how long will ye suppose that the Lord will suffer you? Behold, I give unto you a sign. For five years more cometh, and behold, then cometh the Son of God to redeem all those who shall believe on his name. And behold, this will I give unto you for a sign at the time of his coming. There shall be great lights in heaven, insomuch that in the night before he cometh, there shall be no darkness, insomuch that it shall appear unto man as if it was day. Therefore, there shall be one day and a night and a day as if it were one day and there were no night. And this shall be unto you for a sign. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall believe on the Son of God, the same shall have everlasting life. And behold again, another sign I give unto you, yea, a sign of his death. For behold, he surely must die that salvation may come. Behold, in that day that he shall suffer death, the sun shall be darkened and refuse to give his light unto you, and also the moon and the stars. And there shall be no light upon the face of this land, even from the time that he shall suffer death, for the space of three days, to the time that he shall rise again from the dead. And now behold, saith the Lord, concerning the people of the Nephites. If they will not repent and observe to do my will, I will utterly destroy them, saith the Lord. Because of their unbelief, notwithstanding the many mighty works which I have done among them. And as surely as the Lord liveth, shall these things be, saith the Lord. <laughs> Now it came to pass that the ninety and first year passed away. And it was six hundred years from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. And behold, there was one Nephi, a grandson of Helaman, who did now keep the records of this people. I know very well what the others are saying. I have heard until my ears ache that the time is long past for the signs to be given. 
But that does not change the fact that we must speak boldly among our people. They must not give up their faith. You know too well, Timothy, that the believers grow fewer and fewer each day. So many have fallen away. They say that they have waited long enough, more than long enough, too long, and the signs have not come. Will the signs ever come? Yes, Jonas. Those signs will come, and soon. Oh, Nephi, if only I had your strength and the strength of your brother Timothy. There are days when I have to struggle all over again to convince myself that I am still a believer. And there are even those who question your convictions, Nephi. They say your father left because, well, because he was convinced the signs would never come and that he crept off into the night rather than face the taunts of the people. That is unfair. Our father only followed the instructions of God. What my sister Rebecca says is true. My father never fled from unkind words or taunts of fools who remained blind to the truths of heaven. My father left because God gave him other work to do. Now, I repeat his warnings, and I repeat the warnings of all the holy prophets of God. The Son of God, the Savior of all mankind, will be born into the world. The signs will be given. I tell all of you to remember at the coming of those signs, they were told to you beforehand, to the intent that you might believe. But the more part of the people do not believe. Yes, Timothy, I know they do not believe. I was there. I saw and heard Samuel, and I also heard your father, Nephi. But my children run home frightened each day because they are told they will die if their mother continues to believe. I trust you, Nephi, but what of them? What do I tell them? They were not there. They did not hear for themselves. Then you must help them through your faith and through your testimony. Do not trust in me. Let your trust rest with the Lord.
upon sleepless nights. I have heard his voice, the peace it brings, and felt his love in simple things. Remember how blessed we are. Many of us have seen great miracles. Angels have appeared to some and have declared glad tidings of great joy. Great signs have been given, and the words of the prophets are beginning to be fulfilled. I tell you that great events will soon be upon us. Well, Nephi. I see you still have your little group of sheep with you. Still getting them to follow you with your empty warnings. Be careful, friends. Nephi may lead you like a good shepherd to the slaughter. If you have come to hear the words of truth, we welcome you. If you have come to disrupt our gathering, we invite you to leave. I need no invitation to tread anywhere. Listen well, faithful believers. The time is past, and the words of Samuel are not fulfilled. Your faith has been in vain. Sherem and I have just come from a meeting where it has been determined that a day will be set aside where all those who still believe will be put to death. What? What's death? What's death? By whose order? By the order of those who have gone sick at the rantings and raving of fanatics who watch for a day, who watch for signs, who watch for a savior, who will never come. Oh, Jacob, may God have pity on you. The good that is in you ends with your name. Do not speak of pity to me. It is you who should be pitied, and you, and you, you who will die when the day comes and the signs have not been given. Then who will cry for pity? Jacob, Sherem, leave. Do not order us, fanatic. Jacob, Sherem, leave. Oh, Nephi, can this be so? I am sure they do not mean what they say. Can the fears of my children be coming to pass? They would not kill the believers. Surely this cannot happen. They are only trying to frighten us. Listen to me. Look about you. I ask you, where are those who once stood with us? Where is Benjamin? Benjamin the faithful, we used to call him. And where is Esther? Strong Esther. Where are Ammon and Sariah and Seth? Look about you. Do you see them? Were they not with us but a short time ago? Did they not stand by our sides, believing as we believe? But where are they? They are gone. They have been led away by the cunning of Satan. They have listened to rumors and contentions, and their hearts have been hardened against that which is good and against that which will come. 
Notwithstanding the signs and wonders which have been wrought among us, Satan has a great hold upon many of our people. I plead with all of you, do not let him lead you away. Do not fear threatening words. Cling to your convictions. For the Lord will come. The signs will be given. Now it came to pass that when Nephi saw this wickedness of his people, his heart was exceedingly sorrowful. And it came to pass that he went out and bowed himself down upon the earth and cried mightily to God in behalf of his people. Yea, those who were about to be destroyed because of their faith in the tradition of their fathers. And it came to pass that he cried mightily unto the Lord all the day. Father, thou knowest well the faithfulness of a few. We have continued in our love of thee and have manifest before thee our belief in thy holy words. We have been faithful in keeping the commandments. Many who believed before have turned away from thee, for they have feared that the things which have been spoken of might not come to pass. But there are those who have been steadfast and have watched for that day and that night and that day which shall be as one day. Now a day has been set apart by the unbelievers that all who still believe in these things shall be put to death, except the signs be given. O oh, Father, have mercy on those who do not believe. Let the sign be given, that they too may believe and know that Thou art God. Behold, Father, I have cried unto thee day and night, and even all this day until this night. For I fear that there are weak souls who will yet turn from the truth. They are weak and fear for their lives more than for their love of thee. Keep them strong. Let them walk boldly before men, denying not those things which will yet come to pass. Nephi, lift up your head and be of good cheer. For behold, the time is at hand. And on this night, shall the sign be given. And on the morrow come I into the world to show that I will fulfill all that which I have caused to be spoken by the mouth of my holy prophets. Behold, I come unto my own to fulfill all things which I have made known unto the children of men from the foundation of the world, and to do the will both of the Father and of the Son, of the Father because of me, and of the Son because of my flesh. And behold, the time is at hand, and this night shall the sign be given.
And it came to pass that the words which came unto Nephi were fulfilled according as they had been spoken. For at the going down of the sun there was no darkness. And the people began to be astonished because there was no darkness when night came. And they began to know that the Son of God must shortly appear. And they knew that it was the day that the Lord should be born because of the sign which had been given. And it came to pass that Nephi went forth among the people and also many others baptizing unto repentance in the which there was a great remission of sins. And thus the people began again to have peace in the land. And now behold, there was not a living soul among all the people of the Nephites who did doubt in the least the words of all the holy prophets who had spoken. For they knew that it must needs be that they must be fulfilled. And thus passed away the twenty and eighth year, and the people had continual peace. But it came to pass in the twenty and ninth year there began to be some disputings among the people. And some were lifted up unto pride and boastings because of their exceeding great riches, yea, even unto great persecutions. And thus there became a great inequality in all the land, insomuch that the church began to be broken up. Now the cause of this iniquity of the people was this. Satan had great power unto the stirring up of the people to do all manner of iniquity and to the puffing them up with pride, tempting them to seek for power and authority and riches, and the vain things of the world. And thus Satan did again lead away the hearts of the people to do all manner of iniquity. Therefore they had enjoyed peace but a few years. My, what lovely work you have done. I knew that if you would stay with it, you could do it. It does look nice, doesn't it? I doubted that I would be able to do it properly. Some things always appear more difficult than they actually are. I knew if you would just try, you could finish the robe. Do you ever doubt anything, Mother? What do you mean? Just what I said. My ears have never heard a word of doubt from you. Even when people laugh at you because you are a believer, and say unkind things to you, you never seem to get angry, and you do not repay their unkind words with other unkind words. That would accomplish nothing. Oh, Sarah, I fear for those who no longer believe, but, but their unbelief does not change my knowledge that there will be further signs given of the death of our Savior. You always say that, Mother. You always say that you know. I wish I could say that I know. You can. Say it often enough, and, and soon you will not only say it, but you will believe it. And as you believe, so will you increase in your love of God and your service to Him. You are so good, Mother. You have suffered so much. Father is gone, and you are left alone with no one to help you. But you still find time for a smile and a kind word for everyone. My life has been filled with great joy. Oh, a few moments of sadness here and there have crept in, but knowledge of a loving Father in heaven has chased them away, and my joy has increased day by day as, as I have watched you grow more beautiful through the years. 
But how can you stay so faithful with all the things you have suffered? The things that we suffer sometimes are, are only choice parts of great blessings. who have legs that will not carry us down the paths we must go. You can travel the paths of the Lord even though your legs will not carry you. I will carry you. I will be your guide until you can carry yourself. Will I ever be able to carry myself? I do not mean just to walk. I mean, will I ever know, as you know, that the Lord loves me? Yes, Sarah, you will. Until then, let me carry you. Hold on to that which I know and you will know for yourself someday. Through the wind, through the cold, through the darkness of night, and the trials that stand in their way. Through the pain, through the tears, through the envy and pride, and the harsh things Come in. I wanted to bring you these wild berries from the hills. 
My grandsons brought them home from the hunt, and I knew exactly who would love them. Some for Leah for the sweet taste, and some for Sarah to rub on her cheeks for a little coloring. Oh, Nephi. <laughs> I do not think you need to give her berries for color, Nephi. You make her blush. <laughs> <laughs> I have also come this way looking for Timothy. Did he come to see you today? No, Nephi, we have not seen him. I thought maybe he had brought you something for your evening meal. He mentioned that he was going to try to catch you some fish from the lake. Why do you seem so concerned, Nephi? Is, is something wrong with Timothy? Not really. It is just that for the past few days, Timothy and I have been followed by Jacob and some of his non-believers, and they have disrupted our teachings and have even threatened us a number of times. You have put up with Jacob for so long. I thought after the first signs were given that Jacob was a changed man, but not for long. He returned to his skeptical ways. But the Lord is with you, Nephi. I know that, Leah. Still, I have asked Timothy to stay close by and not be found alone without other believers close by. <laughs> but I probably worry for nothing. Enjoy the berries, Leah, and keep your cheeks blushed with color, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, Nephi. Oh, if I see Timothy, I will tell him you were here. God be with you. And with you. Oh, Nephi, God be with you. See how they walk, boldly as though they had nothing to fear. Why do you follow us and taunt us? Have you nothing better to do? What could Timothy and Rebecca fear? Maybe they fear thunder and lightning. Is that not what your Samuel said to fear? Has not your brother spoken of thunder and lightning and earthquakes? Not only my brother. I too have spoken of such things. Yes, we have heard you, but tell us again, Timothy, we seem to have forgotten. You have forgotten. You have forgotten how you changed and believed after the first signs were given. But see how the years have passed, and again you have turned away from the truth. You say to tell you again, very well, I tell you again, that the time is close at hand when the face of the land will be covered with darkness for the space of three days. How will you do that, Timothy? Will you put out the light of the sun, that it may shine no more? Timothy, don't talk to them. Come, let us hurry home. They need an answer, Rebecca. As you have put the light of the Lord out of your life, Jacob, so he shall put out all light, that men may know of his death. For as Samuel spake, behold, he surely must die that salvation may come. <laughs> Timothy, how amusing you become! I do not speak to amuse you. I speak to warn you, <laughs> repent before the darkness comes, for when that darkness comes, your laughter will change to moaning. <laughs> Laugh now, you wayward sheep, for laughter will soon escape from your lips no more. I have heard enough of your threats. You have warned me once too often. You fanatic! Sherry, stop it, what are you doing? Hold this woman away or I will club her also. Does the truth hurt so much? But you must turn to violence. The best way to silence words that you go tired of is to make sure the words are never Jacob, spoken no. again. Yes, right. Oh, Timothy. Kill him. May God forgive you. Kill the fanatic. Oh, Timothy. No. No, you have murdered him. Of course we killed him. Dead bodies do not speak. And now we no longer suffer his silly words of warning. Oh, then listen to my words of warning. I not only pity you for the judgments of God, but I pity you. For when Nephi finds out what you've done, he will... He will what? If Nephi ever preaches to me again, he will suffer the same death as Timothy. Oh, Timothy. Good and kind. Why? Why did it have to happen this way? Rebecca? Oh, Nephi, where were you? Timothy's dead. They have killed him. Be not afraid, Rebecca. 
God still rules in the lives of men, though Satan has a strong hold of some. Do you think that clubs and stones will stop the plan of God? Though bodies die when hit with stones and clubs, the words of God live on. By the power of God, the dead will be raised. And by the power of God, the living may die. Repent and know that God lives. I tell you, in the name of Jesus, the time is close at hand. Repent before you be carried away in a whirlwind or the earth swallows you up. Repent before you pass the days of your probation. Repent. Repent and come unto Jesus. 